Hello, I'm Joe Heller with Dana Bee Farm, and what we're going to talk about today is all the equipment that you're going to need throughout the year of uh, one year of beekeeping. And um, a lot of times people will uh, buy a beehive, and then throughout the year they'll realize some other things that they need to uh, buy to uh, complete their, their beehive and to get through the year. So I'm going to show you some basic things that you'll need to get through a year of beekeeping and the different parts of the beehive that you're going to have to have uh, to, to get through your first year. Of course, starting out, all you need is a basic beehive, but then as your bees uh, start to grow, uh, as your queen lays more and more eggs and you get more and more bees, of course, you're going to have to make more room throughout the year. And so beekeeping is kind of like growing a garden. Some years are good years, some years are bad years. But I'm just going to show you uh, what will probably happen First, throughout the uh, year. Starting out, you're going to need a uh, complete beehive. Now this is a basic beehive, and this is probably what you'll get when you start beekeeping. Uh, if you've seen advertised uh, in different places for beehives. And uh, this is a Dana Bee Farm beehive. And what uh, this consists of is a bottom board, a hive body, and inside, inside here you'll have an uh, inside cover, and then you'll have your tin frames and, uh, with foundation. And uh, this is what you'll start out with. And when you get your bees, whether you get a, a package bees, a three pound package maybe, with a queen, or maybe you'll get a, uh, a nuke, which is a nucleus colony, which is a small version of a, of a colony with a queen that's already made and laying, usually five frames. What you'll do is you'll take five frames out of this, put those five frames in here, and that's how you'll start out your year of beekeeping with uh, a, a nuke. So what you want to start out with then is your basic beehive. Now, uh, as a rule of thumb, uh, what you want to start out by doing is finding a place to uh, put your beehive. And uh, there's uh, uh, people who keep beehives in the city or, you know, out in the country. You can keep beehives just about anywhere you wish. Uh, but uh, my rule of thumb is morning sun and afternoon shade. And try to keep it out of the wind. That's uh, the three a basic thing that you want to remember when placing your beehive. And also you want to put your beehive up off the ground if you're setting it, uh, depending on where you're setting it, if you're setting it uh, out in your, uh, out in your uh, bee yard. I usually use concrete blocks, cement blocks, and set it up on those. I know there's stands that you can buy, which uh, you can do that if you want, but uh, uh, cement blocks seem to work good. They don't rot and they're inexpensive. So just get a couple blocks. Now you what you'll have on. to do is when you get your bees, is you'll, when, they, when they're first starting out and they're building up, is you'll have to feed them. Now there's different kinds of feeders. Now this is called a Boardman feeder, and this is a pretty common feeder. And what you usually get is you get this little part here, and just use a regular mason jar, and uh, it's full of holes. And of course you fill this full of sugar water. In the spring what you'll use is one part sugar, one part water. And uh, you'll just put this right here in front of your hive, and that's what uh, you'll feed your bees when you're first starting out uh, in the springtime. There's different kinds of this feeders. This is uh, called a uh, pro feeder. And what happens here is this pro feeder goes inside the hive. And some people, some uh, and beekeepers like these because they're not exposed to other bees that may, may uh, start robbing the hive. And this takes the place of a frame, it just fits down inside like so, pretty tight. And then uh, it holds a gallon of sugar water and you fill these little slots. And uh, this, this goes down in the hole and uh, what happens is uh, the bees can climb down in this hole in here and get sugar water and they're able to climb out without drowning. So. Uh, that's another type of feeder. But uh, this feeder here works just as well. I mean, it has, it has some issues, but one thing uh, you can always tell how much you have in here. And if you only got a couple hives, it's usually will work 
pretty good for you. And uh, it's easy to do, you just kind of slide it in the front. So you'll be feeding your bees uh, in the spring when you get your new, when you get your new package. So when they get built up, what we're going to do is we're going to imagine that these frames are all filled. Now, they'll fill up most of the frames in, the bro in this brood chamber down here. This is where your queen's going to be laying eggs and where the eggs are going to be hatching and your new bees are going to be in this brood chamber. Now, let's just imagine that this uh, is filled up. Now, they usually don't, usually, they don't usually do a whole lot with the outside frames. They might do one side of them, but on the outside, they usually don't do a whole lot. So when this starts to get uh, full, eight to nine frames are starting to get full. You look at them and you can tell that they're, you know, they're, they're being used, they're being drawn out on both sides. What the bees will do is they'll take this foundation, they'll draw it out, and then they'll lay their eggs and they'll collect uh, uh, some honey and pollen and put in there. So when these get, pull, we get drawn, is what we say, drawn out, maybe eight frames are drawn out, then it's time for you to make a decision. Usually what I do is if I start seeing a uh, little bit of wax on top of my inside cover here, that's a good sign. Or you can just look and see if, if it's full, then you need to add some more room. So when the, when the uh, uh, what I usually do is when the uh, flowers start blooming, spring's underway, you know, and everything's blooming, you could probably stop feeding your hive then. So you can, later on in, uh, in my area here in Ohio, probably in, Ohio, in, uh, in late May or so, I'll stop feeding. When there's things out bloomed and you can see the bees going in and out and they're bringing, you can see pollen on their legs and you can see things happening, I would stop feeding, feeding your bees then. So after this box here gets full, what I do and what I suggest for beekeepers is run a, this is a deep, I would run two deeps for my bees. And I used to run a deep and a medium, but these days I find it easier to run two deeps. It builds up, gives your uh, queen plenty of room to lay, and it builds up a real strong uh, population of bees. So after you see these Frames so here another start deep to get filled up on top of that with your ten frames in it, and you set that on top. Then your inside cover. Now these inside covers have two sides. Uh, one side is has uh, is, is got your bee space. Your bee space, as you know, is a space where the bees won't build comb. Uh, or burk or uh, propolis or glue it together. So the thin side goes down towards your your uh, brood box and you put the lid on here. So then then you're underway. Your bees are growing, population's growing, uh, your queen she's laying eggs and, and things are really starting to happen. And uh, bees are coming and going. You can go out to your bee yard and you can look and you can see uh, bees coming and going and you can uh, uh, usually what I usually do is stand beside them and I can if, if uh, there's more bees than you can count in other words if you can't count them coming back and going out then there's probably uh, honey flow going on and uh, they're getting a lot of nectar and uh, build out but if they're just one or two going in and out then you know, not much going on. So once this is full, then the next thing's going to happen is this is going to get full. And then uh, this is uh, something that's a variable. Now, depending on your area, there's a lot of variables, just like growing a garden. Depending on the weather, depending on the area, it depends on a few things. But we're just going to imagine that we're having a good year. And this is filled up. And this is uh, starting to get full. Now, a lot of times, uh, your first year, you don't really get a lot of ec extra honey. Um, 
but sometimes you do just like this year uh, 2016 I started some new hives started one swarm and I started uh, some packages and they all did just fine and I even got some surplus honey sometimes you get surplus honey sometimes you won't and like I said before there's a lot of very and it can depend on your queen that you have if she's a good layer she lays from wall to wall in other words she fills up a whole frame full of eggs then there's just a lot of variables to it but we're going to imagine that our queen's a good queen and we're going to imagine that uh, things are really going good so now these two uh, high bodies are full they're getting full now what we want to do is we're going to add a super now a, a high body and a super they kind of are the same thing they look just alike they're just used for different things down below here this is going to be your brood nest this is where the queen's going to lay her eggs anything above that is going to be honey honey supers so actually this could be used as a honey super if it was up here see they're called different things uh, but they, they, they depend on what they're used for. So now this is getting full in our imaginary beehive. Now what we're going to need is we're going to have to put a honey super on here. You want to get yourself a queen excluder. Now this is a uh, queen excluder is, uh, involves and it uh, there's a lot of controversy in the beekeepers world. Some beekeepers don't like them. They say they they keep the bees from coming up into your, your uh, supers. Some beekeepers do use them because what the queen excluder does is workers can get through this screen, but a queen can't get through there. She's, too, uh, she's laden with eggs and she's too heavy to get through there. So what would happen if you put this on there is the queen can't go up into your honey supers and lay eggs so and uh, you know you see so you don't want eggs up in your honey supers you just want honey up there so that's what a queen excluder does now let me get a uh, now let's put our honey super on here we got our queen excluder on here now what I use is a medium super as you can see it fits on there just like that and a medium super, as you can see, is about half the size of a deep. This is a medium. This is called a deep. And you can get different size supers. You can get supers for all different things. You can get supers. There's a shallow super that's even smaller than this. And the type of super that you get was, is really going to depend on what you're going to do with the comb. And you can use a deep for a super if you want. There's beekeepers do that, of course. I use... Um, the mediums are not quite as heavy, a little bit easier to handle. A deep full of honey is very heavy. So these are a little lighter and, uh, and depending on what kind of honey, if you want to get comb honey, there's supers for that. If you want to get extracted honey, there's supers and different kind of foundation for that. There's, uh, there's just all different kinds of things. You can use your imagination. But in our beehive, what we're going to use is we're going to use the medium super and the medium super has the wood frames and has you know the foundation now the foundation that you use uh, for your supers if you want to use comb honey you'll have to use pure wax foundation now uh, around here all we use is the uh, uh, right cell foundation because it's strong it's easy to to use you don't have to use any kind of supports or anything and uh, that's what we use so our supers got foundation in there and it's got 10 Put frames in there. Here. And depending on your area, there's a honey flow going on. Maybe uh, uh, blackberries, maybe honey locusts, or the locust trees are bloomed, uh, clover, you know, whatever's going on in your area. That's the type of honey you'll get. So there's all different kinds of honey. So in our beehive here, we got our brood boxes are full of bees, and we got our honey super on here. And now we're going to wait for the bees to fill the honey super up. So maybe they will, maybe they won't. <laughs> that depends. But uh, the next thing we want to do is we can, when this starts getting full, we can put another super on. And you can keep stacking them, you know. 
And what I would suggest that you do is this gets full. What I would suggest is take this one off and put an empty one in its place and then put this one back on top and just keep doing it that way. So the empty, empty super is next to the uh, brew chamber. All right, now down here. what we're going to look at now is some of the equipment that you'll need to buy and some of the things that you'll need to have to uh, do beekeeping. And of course, uh, one of the things that you'll have to have is you'll have to protect yourself Hat. from the bees. So, in our veil. Now this veil here is, uh, it goes over you and it has some strings somewhere there, strings. And the strings, uh, there's two in the front and the strings will pull down, uh, go through your belt and then there's two in the back and they'll go through your belt loop and you can hold and it holds it down over your head. Now this hat and veil combination is what I wear in the spring and most of the summer because it's not as hot. Now in the fall when it's getting kind of dry bees not a lot going on sometimes they get kind of nasty. I'll, I might wear a jacket then. Uh, with a zip-up jacket that you've seen, uh, depending on the mood of my bees. But this will protect you really well. I uh, can't say I've never been stung, but uh, this protects you pretty well. And you also want to use some gloves. And you just get some gloves that have the long sleeves that go up and uh, protect your fingers. And uh, I would advise you to... Now, you've, you've seen uh, beekeepers who Maybe don't wear anything, but I'm not one of those beekeepers. I don't like getting stung, especially on my fingers. So uh, you need to get you some gloves. And the beekeeper's main tool is his smoker. So you'll have to get a smoker. And a smoker is what you'll take to the bee yard just about every time you go out there. And pretty basic, you just get you some fuel to put in there. And what you'd get in to put in there would be some uh, just anything, leaves, old grass, hay, uh, old burlap. Uh, I use uh, pine shavings, pine needles, anything like that. I wouldn't use an oily rag or anything or anything like that. Uh, but uh, try to use some, uh, some, some, you know, the best thing to use, I guess, is pine needles. They're really good to use. All right, so that's your smoker. So you gotta have a smoker. And you gotta have a this is a hive tool. Now you can use anything for a hive tool, but uh, this is what this is for, is these will be glued together. You can pry these apart with your hive tool. It's got a sharp edge here where you can scrape wax and propolis off. And so it comes in handy. This little doodad here pulls nails. So, uh, and also inside here, there's, your inside cover will be glued down so you'll have to pry it up and you also will need this to pry the frames out with. So it has a lot of uses. Keep that in your brush. pocket. Use a bee brush. Uh, it's real soft bristles and uh, you can brush the bees off. If you're taking honey a lot of times uh, beekeepers will take a frame out and they'll brush the bees off with this. It's a frame and, rest. Uh, now uh, these are very handy. Because when you take frames out, you may be leaning up against, you know, if you're looking at this one, you know, you want to keep going, maybe you'll lean it up against the hive in the back or something to do with it. Well, what this frame rest does is it hooks on your side here and you can take and frames out there, see? Very handy. And, uh, that's a very th handy thing to have is, is a frame rest. And I would uh, suggest you get one of those. I've got to tell you that I don't use it a whole lot, but it comes in handy. And what it does is it'll grab a frame out of there. just like so, and you can hold it with the frame handle. And that's a, something that you really don't need, but it comes in handy too. And uh, that's another gadget. And so in the first... Uh, in the first year of beekeeping, this is basically the uh, 
things that you're going to need besides your bees, of course. And these are all the we're getting ready for our beekeeping season to start. People are going to start ordering packages now. Uh, if you're going to get packages for bees, uh, now's the time to do it. A lot of places are starting to take orders for for uh, packaged bees, three-pound packaged bees, and so uh, now's probably the time in your area that you would want to start thinking about beekeeping. Uh, order your bees. If you're going to have two hives, which I suggest, uh, if you're going to have two hives, you need to order two packages of bees and uh, get your equipment together, get it set up. Remember, morning sun, afternoon shade, and keep them out of the wind and uh, get those set up and ready for your bees. So I'm Joe Heller with Dana Bee Farm, and that's uh, your beginning year uh, of beekeeping.